The capital city of Oslo, Norway, is in the middle of a cultural renaissance, including its dynamic food scene. And it's where chef Espen Holmbaubang, who actually hails from Denmark, introduced reimagined Nordic cuisine to the world through his restaurant Maimo, the only three-star Michelin restaurant in the country, where reservations must be made months in advance for a dining experience that lasts up to four hours. And I was lucky enough to give it a try. Off the pristine waters of the Oslo Fjord, in the land of the midnight sun, a new age of culture is blossoming in the heart of the Norwegian capital. And behind the subtle yet grand entrance is the start of an exceptional dining experience. A doorbell is required to get into Maimo, one of the country's most esteemed restaurants. The unexpected pairings revealed inside, constructed with exacting detail by chef Espen Hobau Bank. The restaurant tour takes diners on a culinary tour of Norway with a creative menu of contemporary and hyper seasonal dishes. It's about finding new stuff, but also about finding the right quality, making sure that whatever comes in is just the way we want it. Would you call your cuisine traditional Norwegian cuisine? I don't want to call it anything really, but we're definitely inspired by traditional cuisine. Known for enduring long winters, Norwegians have relied heavily on pickling and preserving, methods they still incorporate today, even as Oslo has become a gastronomic hub and pioneering new Nordic cuisine. It seems like there is a sort of renaissance almost happening mm -hmm. in Oslo right Absolutely, now. Absolutely, yeah. And also like the general quality uh, is just getting better because people kind of feed off each other. Uh, which also, the more good restaurants there are in the city, the better ingredients we can get. Our meal at Maimo begins with penichette, salted lamb ribs folded into a crisp rye with foraged spring herbs. You're going to get a one bite if you can. One bite? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right. It's very flavorful. Mm -hmm. So we get our diners in a chokehold right away. <laughs> Is that what you want? Complete a control. <laughs> The 36 visitors a night don't seem to mind handing over the reins as they relish a set yet constantly changing menu of about 15 dishes. The dining experience in this dark and dramatic setting has been likened to a well choreographed performance, a spectacle for this apparently easily impressed American. Oh, this is a presentation. What are they doing? What are they doing here? Well, they're just putting on a sauce. You don't have to get so excited about it. <laughs> I am. I'm excited. I'm impressed. I don't think I have people just spooning out sauce in a little saucepan right in front of me very often. The sauce, salty yet smooth, composed of mussels and dill, complement the emulsion of shucked oysters and their juices. It's like a soothing experience. Should be. A soothing experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. It's like you have the essence of Mother Earth on your tongue. Fitting for Maimo, which means Mother Earth in Finnish. Holmbau Bang incorporates both the plentiful bounty of the Norwegian coastline, one of the world's longest, and the country's forest and wilderness. It's important that, you know, the kitchen staff also get involved to create that sort of connection that we can kind of translate into our cooking and in the kitchen that they respect uh, most of all the ingredients. And that respect on even the most micro level achieves maximum effect. Last year, Maimo was named one of the world's 50 best restaurants. While Hombao Bang prizes the food, his philosophy behind it is much more relaxed. Sometimes I hear chefs talking about their menus as almost stories that they tell. I know some people say, you know, it's a very kind of romantic, uh, you know, <laughs> description, like walking along the water and came up <laughs> with an idea, or is this is my grandma, or whatever. Yes. Honestly, I just want to cook really good food, so I just get inspired by the ingredients and then just working with it, and then things come up. <laughs> Langoustine. Langoustine. Also known as Norwegian lobster, it's much smaller and more delicate than its main cousin. Mimos is grilled over an open fire, complemented by a sauce composed of the branches of a black currant bush in its leaves. I'm actually allergic. You're allergic? Yeah, yeah. You are not allergic. I am allergic to oh. this. Yeah, I'll eat it sometimes. I'll get a tickle in my throat, but oh, it's no. going to be fine. <laughs> like, I feel like if I want to go out, yeah. I, I, this is the perfect time. Like, I'll die on, te on so television. So it's worth it to have mm -hmm. this dish. It's, it's worth dying for. Mm -hmm. All right. So sweet, succulent. Oh, that's so delicious. It is, isn't it?
There's also Norwegian comfort food, rumagrut, a porridge for special occasions made of milk, sour cream, flour, and butter. Hombao Bang tops it with smoky shaved reindeer heart with questionably familiar hints. It almost tastes like bacon. Yeah, but that's just... <laughs> Oh man, like. <laughs> in a very, in a very yeah, nice way. Yeah. <laughs> the delicacy, one of Mimo's signature plates. Eating the heart is like the essence. Blood and heart, that's like um, the most precious things. That's, that's what gives the animal life. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if, for me, it's special to eat that. It's not just Hongbao Bang's reverence for food that has made Mimo an instant success. The chef designed nearly everything inside, from the handcrafted furniture to even the way the food is consumed. Look at this one. You, did you, you didn't design this yes. one, did you? You designed the spoon? Yes. <laughs> you designed the it's plate and you designed no? the spoon. It, it, you kind of want to snap it, but you can't. <laughs> Have you tried? No, you, you can do it, but, oh. but please don't. <laughs> That attention to detail has been critical for the Danish chef, who was 28 when he opened Mimo in 2010. Six years later, it was awarded three Michelin stars, making him one of the youngest chefs in the world to achieve that status. When did you realize it would be a success? I don't know if I realized that yet. I don't know if we are a success. Even now? <laughs> I don't know. Like Three it's, Michelin stars. I, yeah, you know, <laughs> you have to distance yourself a little bit from uh, uh, like accolades like that. The most important thing is, is to immerse yourself into making your guest happy. That's not a given. We need to work hard at it. Every day? Every day, every night. <laughs> that tireless effort ensuring constant innovation of all this abundant land has to offer. We just want to cook generous, good food. Uh, we get inspired by the food culture, and most of all, we get inspired by the ingredients. I think I may have killed him a little bit when I compared his uh, signature dish to <laughs> the bacon. Ba the bacon, <laughs> trying the to find spoon, something. the saucepan. Yeah. You were just <laughs> winning over. I had a great winning time. Over. I don't know if he did, but. <laughs> you did a great, you did a great you job. Did. You did. You had a couple of nice Michelle lines. In yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> well, that's the highest <laughs> oh, that was I, I'm, I say it Is nice. that a good No, it's a good thing. It's a okay. great thing. I'm just yeah, checking. Very nice. Well, you know what? Cheers to that then. Oh. Uh, we, brought, we didn't bring anything back from MIMO itself, but this is the national drink in, in Scandinavia. It is aquavit. It is a distilled spirit uh, and flavored with herbs and spices, primarily caraway or okay. perhaps still. No and deer it's heart. It's exceptionally strong. Mm. Mm. Nice job, Nancy. Mm.